Welcome to the Peterson Electronic D500X Full Spectrum Bat Detector. This short video will get you ready to record bats straight out of the box. So let's get started. When you purchase a D500X from Bat Conservation and Management, the unit comes ready to run with an external microphone and a CF memory card. To begin recording, the only other thing you will need is a set of four alkaline C-cell batteries. To get started, Load the battery bay located at the top of the unit, paying special attention to the polarity, and slide the carriage back into the detector, securely tightening the assembly. Then, remove the metal plate at the bottom of the detector by unscrewing the two silver metal knobs. Insert your CF card into the top leftmost slot with the pin receivers pointing inward. Next, Switch the metal toggle switch located to the right of the CF card slots to the internal position. This powers the unit off of the installed batteries. Replace the metal plate and look at the LCD screen on the face of the unit. When properly powered and equipped with at least one memory card, the detector will determine the card size, then display the welcome screen, which includes the installed firmware version and the number and sizes of memory cards available. Press the Enter button on the face of the unit to switch to the Ready screen. This menu displays the highest file number on the primary CF card. Ours is blank because our card is empty, as well as a decibel bar to measure sound input levels and a memory storage meter to show free space on the card. Also, the battery voltage is displayed along with the current program date and time. Note also the active recording profile at the top which for us is user zero. If your detector is not set to user zero, press the enter button and scroll through using the right and left arrow key until user zero is displayed. Note that there are 10 user settings and 10 profile settings. Do not choose profile zero. Make sure user zero is displayed and then press enter. Now we will confirm our user settings. Press the F1 button for the directory. You navigate through these options with the up and down arrow keys on the face. We have user profiles, recording settings, timers, time settings, display, and utilities. We want to make sure our user zero profile has the proper settings for our recording effort. So navigate to the user profile section and press enter. Press enter again to edit the profile settings. Use the right and left arrow keys to adjust the settings and the up and down arrow keys to navigate between the settings. The sampling frequency should be 500. The pre-trigger is off. The recording length is 5. The high pass filter is yes. Auto record is yes. And trigger sensitivity should be medium. When all the settings are correct, press enter to return to the ready screen. At the ready screen, Press F1 again for the Settings menu and select Option 4, Time Settings. Press Enter to see the program date and time and adjust it if needed. The other settings on this menu are for advanced recordings. We will set a simple recording to get up and running quickly. So once the date and time is correct, select Enter to return to the Ready screen. Now we want to set our recording timer. So press F1 and select option 3, Timers. Here we will use an absolute timer, so select that and press Enter. To record, we have the option to program four separate start and stop times each night, but we will only use one. At the absolute timer 1 line, press the power button on the unit and then Enter to adjust the on and off times. These should be set using a 24-hour clock. So enter a start time of 8 p.m. or 20 hundred hours and a stop time of 6 a.m. or 0600 hours. Then press Enter and Escape to return to the Settings menu. Finally, go to the Utilities menu and press Enter. Then select number 4, Battery Settings, and press Enter. Select Event Log at the bottom of the menu and make sure it is turned on. 
This invokes an extended log file to help you troubleshoot your recording if needed. Press Enter, then Escape twice to return to the Ready screen. Now you are ready to make a basic recording. Make sure that you have a microphone plugged into the DMX outlet at the top of the unit. From the Ready screen, press the Record button to pull up the recording settings. A good initial setting for most recording situations is an input gain of 45, a trigger level of 160, and an interval of 0. When the settings are adjusted to your satisfaction, test that the microphone is properly seated in the DMX outlet by scratching your fingers in front of the element and making sure that the decibel meter is moving and the indicator light is lit. If all is well, press Enter and the display will show that the system is in power down mode and the screen will then go dark. Then, two little LEDs on the face of the detector will blink once every five seconds, indicating that the unit is in waiting mode. Now you're ready to deploy the unit. At the end of the recording session, or any time you want to check the detector status, press the power button to turn on the status screen. The recording settings will be displayed briefly, with an on time and off time listed and the status that the detector is either sleeping or armed. To end a recording session, press the power button, then press and hold the power button until the ready screen appears. Then it is safe to power down the detector, turn off the main power toggle switch, and remove your CF card to offload the recordings and see what kind of bats you've got. And be sure to check out the extended D500X video for more detail about menu settings for advanced recording efforts. <laughs>